to order. This is a meeting of the Board of Selectmen. Um, this is a special meeting on August 29, 2016 at 6.30 p.m. Um, the first item on our agenda is present to speak, and I, I see a lot of you are here, and I know there's one topic that I think everyone is... Oh, because it's a special meeting. Oh, oh this is special. Right? Yeah. <laughs> So, I know, it's felt, it felt weird. Um, so I just, I, I wanted to let everyone know, we figured, we found out something this afternoon that uh, might change everyone's um, reason for being here today, and uh, which is that the board, it, it was previously believed that the board of selectmen was the appointing board for vacancies on Region 19. And what we realized at around 3 o'clock today, I think it was, um, is that it's actually the town meeting. It's the legislative body of the municipality that decides who um, is going to be serving in that seat. So it really isn't us who um, we're, we're going to do it, even though we uh, were very prepared to do that today. Um, and actually, and Donna Hardy, our town clerk, is here, and um, so I'm going to ask her to She's here for present to speak. She's an elected official, so I, she gets to go before everybody else is signed up. And then maybe you all still want to, want to speak after that, too. So, um. Okay, I just wanted to clarify. Uh, it is done by a legislative body, and um, it has to go to a town meeting for the appointment of the vacancy for Region 19. And the way that happens is uh, at a town meeting, someone can come and nominate somebody for that position. Uh, in turn, it will be voted on. And then there will be, if there's more than one, there will be a paper ballot at that meeting. And then it will be counted, and that's who will be filling the vacancy. Uh, I think the last one we had was in 2003. And, uh, and at that point, there was only one nominee, so it was just a one vote cast, and and, and they built vacancy. <laughs> now, does anybody have any questions? Yeah, I, I'm sorry I, for the mix-up. Yeah. Uh, Donna, I appreciate all the work you do for your time, and I'm just a little uh, a little shaken by this news, to be quite quite honest. I it was, I, and I've been involved in education all my life. Mm -hmm. um, both sides of the table, so to speak. And it had always been my assumption that it was the Board of Selectmen. Now, is, is there, had there been a change in the law? No, this no, was... No, it was just a mis misunderstanding. Oh, okay. All right, just, this, this is yeah, just information. No, there was no change. Okay, and we, we found this... We went back and looked at that, and since the 2003, there's been no change we, as far as okay. Region 19. And we found this out from our attorney? I found it out through the statutes. I have the a statutes. question. Oh, yeah, I have good. a question into the attorney. Mm -hmm. And seeing it was 3 o'clock this afternoon, he didn't get back to me yet. So but all three of the towns then involved would would be subject to this to the statute. That's how it reads. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, it's the legislative body. So in, in yeah, Mans right. in Mansfield, the legislative body is actually their town is, council. Is their town council, right? Yeah. So, um, but in Wellington, it's the town meeting. Now, this would then be put to a if paper, ballot. paper ballot. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Well, my own, can I can I speak now? Yeah. My only concern with that particularly in view of the circumstances that E.O. Smith is facing right now, is the fact that we are, all of us involved in E.O. Smith, are under some pressure, uh, be it, uh, you know, emotional, be it financial, be it whatever, uh, the prospect of having to abandon what I consider to be a fairly decent structure and move it to an area that is with questions not of the same caliber begs a lot of questions for me and I think the longer we have to delay this decision 
does not help us in Wellington, it does not help Mansfield, it does not help Ashley. So I would be of a mind at this point, and, and actually have always been, that we have this town meeting as soon as possible because it is important to have a full complement of four Willington members sitting on that board to express their opinion. And I have already gone before the last uh, Region 19 meeting and spoke as a private citizen, citing the fact that I had been on the board, the Region 19 board, for 16 years, had served as vice chair for two terms, and had been curriculum committee chair for a long, long, long time. Now, I, I can't even remember when I started that. But, you know, so my, my, my heart is with this, this board, as it always has been, and it is always also with this town. And getting the best education, I feel my daughter and I feel all of your children in this town who have had children at E.O. Smith have gotten a fine education. There might have been little you know, bumps along the road, but nevertheless, the opportunities there, um, you don't find that in a regular one-town high school. So it would be my desire, it would be my request to the Board of Selectmen to set a date for this town meeting as soon as possible. Well, as luck would have it. As luck would have it. As luck would have it. Our other agenda item tonight was to call a town meeting. We have three things. Really? Yes. Wow. And it's not, the date that we're going to have it is the soonest date from now, which is September 15th. Okay. But you do understand you under you understand my motives behind this because especially with what's going on there now and this sort of uh, dovetails into what's going on, on on the local board of education as well with regard to possible school changes whatever so that's my motivation. Okay, thanks, Bob. Um, I know we had a list, but I think uh, yeah, just United question for Donna. Okay. Donna, what was the statute, if you don't mind? 10-46C. Uh, That's it. Thank you, Christina. Yeah, okay. Um, Lori, you're next. Um, actually, I'm not going to speak on what I originally came to say, but um, I just want to clarify, it's only Region 19 that would have to go to town meeting because if we have a vacancy in another board, that if it's not filled by the board, it goes to the selectmen. Correct. Okay. Correct. I just wanted to clarify that point. Thank you. Yep. Um, Kate Standish? Um, in light of all yeah. this, I'm not going to speak. Okay. Um, and Elena, Elena Testa? Yes, I am sick. I won't set to. Okay. <laughs> it's cool. All right. Uh, does anyone else want to speak? That's, that's here. Anybody else have any questions about how it's done at the town meeting? Well, yeah, we, we talked about that a little bit today um, because I wasn't sure if we how we should put it on the town meeting. So we're doing it the way it was done in 2003, and basically it um, it will it will come to the, the moderator will ask for nominations. Nominations can be made from the floor, and then um, after that there will be paper ballot votes. So. Yes, hi, uh, Along with uh, Bob, John, I'm good friends with him, isn't it? Uh, yeah, we are. <laughs> both, both, of us, both of us were on the, uh, the Region 19 board. I was on it for 16 years, and I was also on the Wilson board at the same time. The, uh, and I think he is correct in saying that we should have someone on that board as, as soon as as possible. I think that uh, representation is is uh, in, in order. The uh, Region 19 is a, a unique group in that the uh, structure of the uh, of the board is that Mansfield has the majority uh, rule really. They have usually four Democrats as their um, representatives. Matter of fact, at the last election, they put up two for the Region 19 openings, and there was no opposition. 
Uh, usually the chairman of the Region 19 is a Democrat and the vice chair is a uh, is also a Democrat. Bob can attest to that because he was vice vice chair for a long period of time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, actually, both, sir, but both I, of us, I confirmed that Mansfield, all four seats are Democrat and all four Bashford seats are also Democrat. Two of ours are Democrats. Yeah. You're, the, you're the only Republican. The only Republican, or your Republican seat, that, that's uh, voice on that. On that. <laughs> <laughs> but he, yeah. he is correct also, and he mentioned the last time, I think, because he was here, that the, uh, once you're on the board, the decisions that are made are made uh, strictly for the children and for the community. Most of the time, I would say 99% of the time, party line probably doesn't come in. Uh, the Willington board, unfortunately, the last couple of meetings, they voted according to, you know, party lines, but that's something else again. But, but I think both and I, Bob and I are running for this uh, position, and uh, the, uh, when the town meeting occurs, we have an opportunity to uh, give information as to our background, educational background, our oh, yeah. uh, things that we have done in the, uh, in the education field, for example, oh, uh, that most people don't realize, yeah. you know, what, uh, what we have done and what we have uh, uh, been able to do, uh, primarily because we're kind of modest. We don't go running around, you know. Beating on Trump, but in this case, yeah, it may be necessary for Bob and I to do that. You know. But we, we, want, we, want, we want to be. I have mine ready. <laughs> well, well, from from what I, you'll you'll both be have the opportunity to do that, and other people can speak on your behalf as well. What you will need, um, any candidate needs someone to nominate them, and it needs it has to be seconded, and then. Um, they'll have an opportunity to speak, so. Um. And it is the 13th, do you say? Yes, yeah. yeah. and, yeah. and is it, I haven't been to a town meeting recently. Is it still back at the old town hall? Yes. Mm -hmm. Really? Mm -hmm. In history. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the endorsement, endorsement by the Republican Town Committee of my candidacy for this position uh, is not and void and and no, I don't. I don't. I don't think that it is. I think that that's a that's a key thing somebody should bring up for both of you. You both have endorsements by the major parties, so um, that's something something that you're someone should when they nominate you perhaps mention that. Um, that's I think a, a big data point. I can, can I agree? Mm -hmm. I I think Herb's what Herb said, you know, and buddy, we are many many years and. What he said is absolutely correct. That when, and that was part of the gist of my, of my last statement before you. And I do mean this sincerely. That when we go to Region 19, there is no partisanship. I can't remember one incident where there was. And we vote, we vote with our hearts and our consciences for the betterment of the kids who attend there and the betterment of their parents and hoping that the parents would be pleased with the education of their sons and daughters did. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're and I just want to say that mm -hmm. what he's saying is probably correct, but it's uh, his opinion in regard to the structure of the board over there. Having worked on that board for, for a decade or two, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I agree with him up to a point, but nevertheless, when I said on that board, I knew the chairman was a Democrat. I knew the vice chairman, Governor Bob, was a Democrat. Oh, oh, oh. And I knew the chairman of the major committees of Region 19 were Democrat. I was the only Republican mm -hmm. there. Right. Yeah. Well. I think there was a sentinel there, too. Oh, yes. That yes, is yes. Actually, that. so there, there's 12 seats, 10 are Democrat. One um, is a vacancy that's a Republican vacancy, and the other one is a Sentinel. That's it. So, um, so anyway, I just, I just personally want to thank you both for your your service on the on the board all these years, and your willingness to serve again, and and your willingness to put yourself forward like this. So, you're more than welcome. I, I think that's great. You're more than welcome.
Yeah. And I think we should thank all the other folks here for, yes. Yes, for taking out. time and coming out to uh, participate. Even though I guess we'll hopefully see a lot of people on the 13th. I'm sure we will. So, all right. Sorry, sorry about that, everybody. I don't, I don't know. Well, it's best to know now. Well, yeah. Both it occurs in the future. Yeah, definitely. Um, we have some new business, which is to award the timber harvest contract for Fenton Ruby Park. And I think Chris, you're here to talk about that, right? No, um, Kathy. Jones. Oh, Kathy. That's I always say Chris. That's because my email says I know. Chris. I know. I know. <laughs> no worries. Um, I know you're Kathy, though. Uh, as you know, as a board, the um, Conservation Commission has the responsibility for managing the Benton Ruby Park and Wildlife Preserve. And one of our goals is to improve forest health as well as wildlife habitat. And in doing that, we've been working with a natural resource consultant in the last few years. And we identified an area of the park that's in the southeastern portion of the park, close to the Ashford border, where there's no trails, that would benefit from a forest thinning um, to improve the health of the, um, the trees that are there, as well as you know, kind of put in some new early successional growth and improve wildlife habitat. Um, so last fall we started working with a forester, Dan Evans from Andover, who marked our trees for us. And then in January he ended up getting uh, a job with the state, um, so he as a forester, so he could no longer work as an independent contractor. So we um, started to look for another person with recommendations that Dan had given given us. And in um, April. Um, we started to work with Eric Hansen, who's a forester from Faruqi and Waluki, which is in the middle field. Um, and Eric has been working with us. We're planning um, the timber thinning on about 18 acres of the park. There's 300 acres in the park right now. And we would like to be able to start that harvest at the end of September. Um, all the timber has been marked. There's about 53,000 board feet of saw timber and 91 cords of firewood that the harvest would, um, would come from the harvest. Um, and probably about, that would be about a thinning of maybe 50% of the trees that are in that 18 acres. Um, we had our harvest plan developed by the forester and that was reviewed and approved by Inland Wetlands in May. And then in <coughs> July, our forester sent out a prospectus and a request for bids to stumpage buyers he also did a site walk. Uh, Derek from Public Works also did attend that site walk to review kind of the Burma Road area and everything because of the harvest. Um, we did receive three bids back, and last week at our um, Conservation Commission, we reviewed those bids. Um, I had sent our minutes. You should have our minutes. Um, the three bids were from Brad Courtson of Ellington for $6,667. Hull Force Products for $5,200, and Permatree from Durham for $4,500. Um, after reviewing the bids and discussing the references um, with the forester, the um, conservation would like to recommend to the Board of Selectmen to award that contract to the highest bidder. That is what he is willing to pay us for the, for the wood um, when he does the harvest. So, and we would like that to go to Black Courts. And, so I'm glad you clarified that because I thought you were picking the higher, highest bidder that we had to pay. Uh, <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. yeah, this is yeah, yeah kind of the opposite. Now, had somebody said, "This is what we want to pay you." That's always nice. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, you said this was 18 acres. 18. It's 18 acres of the park. I actually have a picture and uh, the area of the park, with, like a copy of the map. And this is what was submitted. <coughs> So it's at the farthest end of Burma Road, just past the Pilka uh, property, where it goes up, and it's unapproved road. Um, and it, there's no trails right now in that area. So, and there are some wetlands in that area. Um, originally, we had hoped that we could do uh, a larger area within that. We call it a management unit. It's actually 33 acres in that particular management unit. 
but after reviewing everything, um, only about 18 acres we can do the thinning on. So, can use the weapons. So all we need to do is make a motion, right? Uh, I'll make a motion that we award the timber thinning at Fenton Ruby Parks Park um, to Brad Cordson of Ellington, Connecticut for $6,667. Um, discussion? Yeah, and, and, and just to clarify, that's the amount that they will pay us. That's what they will pay us. Right. And they are the had the the, the highest bid, bid for that. And mm -hmm. uh, and I just want to thank the um, conservation commission because mm -hmm. it's great that you guys are taking care of this for yeah. the town. Well, thank you. Um, we you know we know yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful thing. resource for the town. Mm -hmm. but, um, the other thing I wanted to mention is that we will have a public education walk um, September 24th before the harvest starts. Mm -hmm. We'll be advertising that so that any uh, resident, um, and, and we're inviting uh, specifically also, we're sending letters to the abutters in case they have questions or concerns, that they can come out and walk the site, talk to the forester, so they'll, they'll understand what's gonna happen during the harvest and what things will look like after, because aesthetically things will change. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So we wanted to make sure people, you know, the public was aware. Yeah. So. Okay, good, thank you. Wait, did we vote? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 Right, it's unanimous. Okay. Um, so we have an appointment here for a municipal historian. And I know we have uh, you and I think Sure. Uh, when we start talking about all the uh, differences of parties here and uh, party sticking together. Here I have to make an exception because I've known Mark Palmer for a long time and even though he's a Democrat, he's a good guy. I have to say that. Uh, he's a good friend of mine and he has a, uh, boy he's smart. He's got a great mind, a great mind for, his, his, uh, for history and he wants to do this job, I assume, because you did volunteer for it. Well, that's kind of what I've been doing. And I think that's what the, and the town needs him to do this. So I would uh, like to have the honor of appointing Mark, or of nominating Mark Palmer as the town historian until, I guess, this is forever. <laughs> <laughs> until he passes away. There's no end date Um, discussion. Mark, do you want to talk about why you want to be in story? Um, it's something that I've been working with for probably the last years. And without really thinking about it, um, looking at what other municipal historians have been doing, it's basically what I've been doing for eight years. Mm -hmm. It's something I'm interested in. Going to do it anyway, whether I'm a historian or not. So, um, it's work I find interesting and I'm drawn to. So. And and what is the work? Because I know Joe Joe Pro, like he he spent a lot of time working on the, the Wellington book, and I think he helped a lot of people with genealogy and things like that. Is is that what you see it? I, it there's no job description for it, so it basically right. is. <laughs> um, I looked online for some mm -hmm. guidance in terms of what it is, and it's really kind of throwing the liaison with mm -hmm. whoever needs assistance with it. It's the genealogy and the things that's been done, by there's enough resources available for people to do that. Mm -hmm. But um, civic organizations, Record keeping, um, making the history more accessible, I think would be probably the paramount position. So um, sort of like when the church was looking to see who owned the land a couple yeah. of years ago. That yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. The, you yeah. know, because you my name them. came Didn't up. You and, them? Yeah, right. I remember you helped. So you know, and they paid good money for the title search for yeah. that, um, and it turned out that the record was in the books. Um, 
the record was incomplete, but you know, they do have title to it. They do have mm -hmm. um, a good deed. Mm -hmm. so, we get a lot of calls in the clerk's office from all over the country requesting somebody to do the genealogy, and we always refer them to the historian. Um, <coughs> Phyllis Fenton was another one. She had asked, gotten a hold of my name and asked me about um, access to a landlocked piece of property that she had on the left of the center road. And so I did some research on the property and the access to it and kind of documented that she has access to it. Um, she owns it with a cousin or something. Um, I don't remember all the details, but it's um, a road that was discontinued by the town but turned into a bridal path. And it's been used over the years. So it still has, you know, that property has legal access along the bridal path. And that bridal path crossed a property that um, the state was looking at putting a summary path. Right. And they couldn't, you know, by state statute, prevent access to the property along that line. So, so that was my letter to the state. So little things like that. I mean, it's just, it's eyeball stuff that pops up. My own particular interest is probably colonial history. So, you know, I know Isabel's was the 1800s, the mills, Hall's Mill, mm -hmm. and, uh, that kind of stuff. My He's been working on a lot of maps and where pieces go, and mm -hmm. very interesting for all the things he's put together. And, um, cool. Mm -hmm. I've heard good things. I've heard good things. I think you would yep. be a wonderful addition to, to the town. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Bob Shadow has something to say. I do. Uh, I, uh, we've enjoyed, uh, the historical society has enjoyed working with our previous historians. And uh, I've uh, asked Mark to look into a few things over the years, which he has. and. Uh, I think the uh, Historical Society will enjoy working with him uh, in our quest for bringing uh, our history, you know, into the present day, uh, mm -hmm. especially with the Society uh, on the verge of opening the tavern to uh, visitors on a regular basis. So. Mm -hmm. I'm a, his, I'm a professional historian, archaeologist, and Mark has worked with me a few times, and I've read, well, he's laughing, <laughs> I've read one of his papers, and I think he'd be a great, definitely a great point person. Um, when people ask what a historian does, um, we kind of wear many hats. It's not just deep research and genealogy, in fact, that's tend to be on a little but helping people connect the dots for cultural resource management and bring it to the forefront and make it relevant to today, as well as, um, you know, Focusing and um, showcasing the intrinsic value of our history in the town. And Mark's fantastic. And he knows what he doesn't know. He knows who to contact to find out. He's got a great effort for that. And I think that's brings more strength to his position. Could I just add a little about Mark? Um, I, 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 I wasn't second, expecting him. I, I, <laughs> we're all here for you. <laughs> the, pay so, the, pay is, the pay is so high, Mark. Yeah. <laughs> But I, I would just like to say that, you know, being associated with Mark for a number of years now, uh, I know how arduous his research is, and I know that we are also gaining someone who is a graphic artist as well. So we're not only getting the information, we're getting it graphically and photographically, uh, you know, presented to us. So I, 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 I'm glad he's doing this, being a historian myself, but, you know, a teacher of history. I'm, I'm happy that, you know, that he has found this avenue that, that he's had for a long time already. And uh, I just wanted to interject that we do have, you know, the, the graphic art and the pictorial art as well. So that's a, a bonus. Okay. Anyone else got anything to say about Mark?
raise. Well, we haven't voted. Yet. We gotta vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Mark. Thank you for willing to serve. All right, so, so the next on the agenda is the Region 19 Board of Education, and we already talked about that a little bit, and Peter, you just walked in, and I, I'm guessing you did John just fill you in on, on what happened? He did, thank yeah. you. Okay, yes, yeah, sorry. We, we were debating whether or not to send out a notice about it, but it wasn't until like, you know, 5.30 or so. It was late, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, sorry for anybody who came here just, just for that. But you'll have another opportunity. And also, if people cannot make the meeting, they can always submit written comments to be read by someone else, too. So, that's an option for the town meeting. And it is at 7? Is, is, yeah. uh, is that the general yes. time? Yeah. Yep, 7 o'clock. What is the date? September 13th. And there's three other items on the agenda. Which, um, uh, we're, we're, yeah, we'll get to that. That's where we, where we are now. So here's the call of town meeting. I'll, I'll read it. Um, I'll, we'll, I'll make a motion that we call a town meeting that says this. Uh, town of Willington notice and warning special town meeting. The electors of the Town of Willington and all persons who are entitled to vote in Town Meeting on the matters mentioned in the following warning are hereby warned and notified to meet in Town Meeting at the Old Willington Old Town Hall, 11 Common Road, Willington, at 7 p.m. Tuesday, September 13, 2016, for the following purpose. Now we have item one as being to see if the townspeople, based on the recommendation of the Board of Finance, will appropriate $15,000 from the Capital Projects Fund, LOSIP 022016, Old Town Hall Electrical for the purpose of electrical and restoration work at the Old Town Hall to be reimbursed by the State of Connecticut Local Capital Improvement Program. Item two, to see if the townspeople, based on the recommendation of the Board of Finance, will authorize the appropriation of $13,500 from the Capital Projects Fund, LOSIP 02 2017 Public Works Garage Improvements for the purpose of lighting, air conditioning, heating upgrades, and garage door resealing to be reimbursed by the State of Connecticut Local Capital Improvement Program. And item three, to see if the townspeople, based on the recommendation of the Board of Finance, will authorize the appropriation of $500,000 from the Capital Projects Fund 033057 to continue construction of the drainage improvements and resurfacing of Phase 4 of the reconstruction of Turnpike Road between Ruby Road and Moose Meadow Road to be reimbursed by the Small Town Economic Assistance Program 106-149. And then item four, Willington electors to nominate and vote for Willington electors to fill a vacancy on the Region 19 Board, Regional 19 Board of Education. Registered voters attending shall cast a certified paper ballot on the nominated names. Dated at Willington this 29th day of August 2016, Willington Board of Selectmen, and it has our three names. I will second that. 